Okay, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Doctor. Okay, how many Doc groups are we going to? Yes, Doc, Dr. Tara, good morning, Pa. For Audrey. Okay, I'll leave you now. Okay, thank, thank you, Pa, Dr. Tara. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, who is the LO for this batch? I like you to be the co-host. Okay, doctor. My name is Simran. You can make me the co-host. Okay, can you actually control now the Zoom? Yes, doctor, I can. Okay, who else that I'd like to, that I should be making the co-host? Doctor, you can make Nikhil Sharma also as the co-host. He's the second LO. Who's, who's the second LO? Please open your mic so I could see you. Second co-host. Who's the second co-host? I'm the other LO, doctor. Okay, now we have two co-hosts. How many groups are we going to have for reporting for today? We'll try to get done with more than 10 groups, doctor. So there's going to be 10 groups for today's session? Yeah. Okay, it's going to take a lot of time. I didn't realize that. Okay, how many minutes per group? Five to six minutes, doctor. Okay, can can please someone be the timekeeper? Okay, doctor. He will be the he will be the timekeeper. So inform the group that it's already times up for the Q and A. Okay, doctor. I will only throw one two questions. Okay. Okay, doctor. And doctor, during the report. Yeah, and during the reporting, may I may I require every members of the group to open the video during the reporting so I can easily call who is going to answer. Those who are reporting and your group is reporting, please open the video. If you are not in the group or present here, you will be marked zero. Okay, group leaders, make sure that your members are here and they are opening their video. If they are not opening the video and they are not here during the reporting, submit the names to your LO and then we will mark them zero. Understood? LO, please monitor the attendance. Get the names of the reporters or the members of the group. Check if they are open with the video. And if they are not here and they are not opening the video, it means they will get zero from this activity. Okay? Okay, doctor. Just to be fair. Okay, let's start. Good day, ma'am. We are from group nine and we are, our topic today is personal hygiene. Personal hygiene derives from the Greek word hygiene. Hygiene is nothing but goddess of health, that is, healthy sound. Hygiene. Personal hygiene is very important in our daily life because it may lead to even environmental hygiene. Personal hygiene. Personal hygiene may be defined as principle of maintaining cleanliness and grooming your external body. Failure to keep up a standard hygiene can have many implications. Not only increase the risk of getting an infection or illness, but there are many social and psychological aspects that can affect. What is personal hygiene? A regular routine of your personal care, washing and grooming of your hair, face, skin, teeth, ears, hands, nails, feet. Hair. Hair is made up of uh, different dead cells. Hair is very important because it brings oil to the surface of the skin. Hair helps warm the body by trapping a layer of air next to the scalp. 
coming to hair care tips wash regularly with the shampoo rinse hair thoroughly with clear water after shampooing to remove all the soap don't scrub or rub too hot it may irritate your scalp or damage your hair massage your scalp well it it will remove dead skin cells brush your hair daily wash your combs and brushes frequently don't shave combs why to brush your hair brushing helps to keep the scalp, uh, scalp clean by losing or removing dust and dead cells it also adds shine to your hair hair and scalp problems dandruff headless splitting and breaking avoiding and treating headlines by uh, not sharing your combs brushes hats barrettes hair things headphones uh, use special shampoo and wash your hair uh, regularly and immediately splitting and breaking too much heat can cause the layered cells of your hair to split apart and even break off if you put your hair in a ponytail use a coated rubber band or soft hair cloth uh, cloth band skin skin is very important uh, so we have to maintain our skin common skin problems bad odor acne body odor body odor is caused by poor hygiene foods such as onion and garlic acne acne is created when oil uh, from the oil glands mixed with dead cells and plug up the hair follicles in the skin it creates a white head a black head is when it touches the plug the plug turns black what makes acne worse oil based makeup suntan oil hair gels and spray for girls menstruation for boys it may get worse because they have more skin oil squeezing or uh, picking at blemishes hot scrubbing of the skin daily baths or showers using soap and uh, scrubbing the entire body uh, with a wash cloth do not need to scrub violently wash the face two times a day with a mild soap or gentle cleanser it is best to use lotions only if needed and use the ones that are oil free and water based try to stay out of the sun and use a sunscreen every day during summer and winter coming to skin care tips bath shower regularly using soap do not scrub violently if possible bath or shower after exercise especially after sweating uh, wear clean cloths reduces stress levels which irritates the skin maintain a healthy diet wash your face two times a day avoid washing too often as the skin will become irritated and dry out keep oil hair away from your skin avoid touching acne uh, when washing do not squeeze or pick the pimples try to avoid touching the face keep hands clean by washing them oftenly protect yourself from the sun by wearing sunscreen and reapply for every 4 hours wear a hat t-shirt and sunglasses drink plenty of fluids protect your, yourself from uv rays teeth healthy teeth and gums enable you to ch chew food thoroughly give uh, shape and speak clearly coming to dental problems uh, uh, these are caused by activity of certain types of oral bacteria uh, tooth decay plaque tartar periodontal disease how to avoid uh, problems on brushing uh, uh, and flossing daily dental hygiene routine that consists of brushing for 2 to 4 minutes and flossing if possible brush after every meal and rinse your mouth with warm water use a soft bristle brush brushing and flossing replace your toothbrush every 2 to 3 months or often uh, uh, after uh, an illness use toothpaste that contain fluoride eat at least uh, uh, five servings of fruits and vegetables eat, uh, per day include food that contain calcium such as milk yogurt uh, limit intake of sugar see a dentist every 6 months ears wash your ears daily with a washcloth don't forget behind the ears hand hygiene first wet hands and apply liquid or clean bar of soap next rub your hands together and scrub all surfaces mainly palms fingers and in between the fingers continue for 10 to 15 seconds soap combined with the scrubbing action that helps to remove germs rinse well and dry your um, hands nails and cuticles the part of the nail that can be seen and touched composed of dead cells thin skin layer at the base of the each nail is cuticle a non living band of tissue nails pro uh, protect the uh, sensitive tip of our fingers and toes without proper care they can become weak in grown or infected keep nails trim but do not cut nails shorter than skin level keep nails clean uh, round your fingers slightly when trimming them cut toe nails straight across smooth rough nail edges with a file or uh, emery board clean and soften your hands in warm water to keep your cuticles neat push them back after soaking your hands while they are soft you may also use cuticle remover a chemical that dissolve the cuticle 
Feet care. Large collection of sweat glands live in, live in our feet. Wash your feet at least once a day. Dry them carefully, especially between the toes. Keep feet and skin, uh, skin clean and dry. Change socks daily. Avoid walking barefoot in public areas. Make hygiene part of your daily routine. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, can I, can I ask all the members to open the video? So I can easily call. We're going to answer. Open the video. Stop sharing. Okay, please open the video. Okay, first question. Are we aware that health professionals, future doctors, that we must be responsible for our own personal hygiene? And what would be the implication if, if, doctor himself is not showing or giving us proper personal hygiene, what would be the implication to your patients? Can someone please answer the question? Deborah. Hello, doctor. Yes, what is the implication if the doctor is not actually exhibiting good proper hygiene? He has body odor, he has dirty fingernails, he had dandruff everywhere. What would be the implication? Kavitra, I am I'm asking practical questions. Parinta. Please answer the question so we can move on to the next group. The patient don't like to come near to doctor. Doc. And what else? Your patient will not be able to come. Doctor doesn't want to see you. And Deborah, Peter's Deborah, what's the implication? Doctor is uh, in uh, in negligible and how he is careless in taking care of himself and uh, uh, giving treatment also for the patient. When uh, the patient is to have Okay. Okay. Turn off your microphone. Last question. How would you feel? Have you been to the Philippines many times, right? During the first two years. Okay, how do you feel that there is actually discrimination among Indians? That Indians have poor personal hygiene and they smell bad. How do you feel about it? No, doctor. We'll maintain our hygiene well. We did not find any discrimination among Indians. Okay. But in the Philippines, you have noticed that there is actually an impression made by some people that Indians are actually not very conscious about their personal hygiene because we are very sensitive with the smell. Okay, and I have seen and witnessed them even in our school. Most of you, I'm not generalizing, most of you, especially men, going to school with dirty clothes, okay, not presentable, and at times smelling bad. I could actually smell them inside the room or even in the elevators. And what would be the implication of that? How will I trust this doctor? if he himself doesn't know how to take care of himself. Why is it important that we need to have good personal hygiene? What do you want to tell your patients? Personal hygiene is the number one line, the first line of defense in the prevention of illness and diseases. So if you are doing or showing me that you don't know how to take care of yourself, do you think your patients will believe you? So we need to walk the talk. You 
you preach, you, you, you preach what you teach, and you also do what you teach. So make sure if you are seeing patient, that patient can easily trust you because you are authority in health and well-being. So the next time I'm going to see patients or say students that are not in their best hygiene, definitely I will send you home and not accepting you in the classroom. If I'm, if I'm gonna be very strict with you guys. Okay, so next group, please. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Today we'll be discussing quackery in medicine. In India, if one isn't feeling well, they usually go to a government hospital as their first option, with doctors prescribed medication worth an amount not everyone can afford. This is the main reason why such people are forced to go to cheap fraud doctors called as quacks. Medical quacks will generally suggest they have skills or insights that qualify them as an expert or have unveiled secrets that governments and businesses want to actively suppress. Oftentimes, they make remarkable convincing cases, even carrying mm. professional credentials that provide them the wiener of respect. Excuse me. The problem with quacks is that the... Can you hear me? Let me interrupt you. Is this just going to be, how are you going to report? You're reading your script based on what is presented in the PowerPoint, word by word, and you think this is reporting? I can also read that. Why are you reading that for me? Are you explaining exactly what you want to say in this PowerPoint? No, you are just reading. And if this is how you make a PowerPoint, word by word, paragraphs per paragraphs. PowerPoint visual aid should be just bullet, seven or five lines only with some pictures in it and then explain. It's not as if you're just reading your report based on the PowerPoint. So this is going to be like that all, all throughout the report? What would your classmates or your viewers or audience would learn from this? Reading comprehension? Answer me, which group is this? Who's the leader in this group? What kind of reporting is this? You're just reading your script. My goodness. Okay, without PowerPoint, can you tell me what is your report and discuss this? Medical quacks, what is this? What practice is this? And why it's actually interesting to talk about? You see, you just rely on your PowerPoint. You can't even say a word because you're just reading. Okay, can you please answer me? Open your video. I said open the video when the group is reporting. Priya Sonali, what is medical quack? So actually in our report, we're going to talk about like uh, in India, there are many un, 
like there are uh, many unregistered doctor who practice in the villages uh, with the fake degrees they'll do some uh, they pro- give some steroids and all and uh, magically it gets treated the uh, not magically like uh, it get treated and the people consider him as a doctor like uh, who are uh, uneducated and also in our report we going to talk about like uh, ayurvedic doctor you must have heard about like ayurvedas in which unani doctor and the naturalists are there and the governments are giving them the permission to practice as a like a general physician uh, just to overcome the shortage okay. of very good okay so nali you know what you are reporting very good Okay, and so what is the implication? Why we have to know about this? Modak, why do we have to know about this? That this is happening in India? And what is the implication or effect to you as future doctor? Modak. Uh, because this is happening a lot number of times uh, in India. Uh, causing problems uh, for the patients to uh, hold on uh, call. kundu kundu would like to say something yes kundu uh, yeah uh, we, we were talking about this topic basically to uh, put light on the fact that the, no, the normal quaternary medicine and also what are the other available uh, branches of medicine which indians use and also the why why this branch of like you know why how quackery is used by doctors to for their motivations and benefits and things like that yeah okay okay what else what else you would like to share um, uh, basically this what happens in india specifically there are a lot of uh, people there are a lot of doctors who um, get their degree by just you know uh, by forgery and by imagery and things like that so what happens is they kind of when they become like when they give um, the tests and things like that to do uh, what happens is often it causes harm to the, um, the, the yes the we all know that yeah, okay exactly. aniket aniket yeah. what aniket what What is the government doing? What is the government Actually, doing now? Actually, sir, government is doing. Uh, government is identifying these uh, quackers, but actually, due to lack of resources, they can't be identified as much. And that's why, doctor, the. Uh, the number of quacks are actually increasing so we choose this topic sushmita sushmita yes doctor can i report a quack doctor to the police and the government as a common people or a common person how can i do uh, that uh doc if doctor if you actually know who's a quack doctor you have any suspicions you can go and report it to the local police station whichever is nearby uh but what exactly happens up there none of us know because people hardly common people hard find it difficult to identify who's a real doctor and who's actually a quack why do so, you think it's difficult to identify who are quack uh, uh, uh doctor see the most of the quacks uh usually target the audience or the people who are uh, usually from the backgrounds from the non educated backgrounds or from very rural areas where people don't have much knowledge about everything so for Prasad. people like that it it thank becomes you. difficult to actually know okay thank you prasad can i check a doctor in the website okay i want to know if this aniket is really a doctor is there any tool or website that i can check a medical doctor to verify uh I, we can we can check it on uh, the official websites of uh, i am uh, uh, this uh, indian medical council and do you think people are doing that no actually uh, this quackery generally happens in the most rural of the rural area where uh, actually in india uh, doctors are doctors are also motivated to have a better lifestyle in order to do so they move to cities and uh, 
to places where they can earn more uh, uh, and uh, the rural areas are left without doctors so in rural areas there's uh, a, a lot less education there are a lot less educated people so they don't know how to identify them also they don't have a uh, access to proper doctors so they have no choice okay. to go to uh, anywhere uh, wherever they can go for uh, their uh, their Vivek? Yeah. Thank you, Prasad. Vivek. Yes. So, yes. moving forward, how can we help the community? Uh, doctor, we can help the community by uh, educating the people in the rural areas, by uh, giving them the resources or, you know, letting them know how things can be done, how we can check if the doctor is real or no. Because uh, they lack the education and they don't have the resources to uh, so that they can access and see if, 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 if the person is really a doctor or no. Like we all are just the, like educating. We have. Vivek, yes, can we also doctor. train? Can we also train the mothers? Can we also train the the community leaders to yes, do doctor. first aid, something like yes, that? Doctor. Then yes, do you doctor. have activity or program like that in India? Yes, doctor, we do have programs that do that, but uh, there is there are some people who still uh, try to uh, like they become quacks and then. After that, uh, there are still people who are not able to identify them. So there is lack of education also over there and lack of resources. So not everyone knows about it. There are very specific people who will know about it. As Kundu, well. thank you. Thank you, Vivek. Kundu, have we seen an increase of quack doctors for the past 10 years, especially during pandemic, or there is actually decline? There has the been an increase doctors. because uh, there has been an increase in quad doctors because during the pandemic, not uh, especially in rural areas, not everyone was really uh, aware of the uh, aware of what is actually going on. So people, the normal quad doctors, they took this opportunity to you know to fool people, and eventually the number of quacks have increased during the pandemic. So yeah. So a lot of people took advantage of the situation. Yes, absolutely. They took a lot of advantage and uh, due to the re remunerations and things like that. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, group two, very good. Okay, next group. You see, you can do reporting even without those scripts. I don't need to read those long wordings. As long as you know your topic, you can easily discuss this. Okay, next group. Thank you, group two. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Okay, next group, open the video. All of you, open the video, members, so I can easily call you. Okay, if you have PowerPoint, you can share now. And if I don't like what I'm actually going to see, I will also again do the discussion without PowerPoint. Okay, next group. Who's the next group? Let's group. Come on, let's start. Actually, Doctor, we didn't made as a presentation. Uh, we made it as a promotion video. Is that okay, Doctor? Okay, let's watch it. Okay, Doctor. Students, have you all done your assignment? Yes, yes doctor. doctor. Here is our assignment. Just think about it. Be smart about it. Look into your fridge, examine. Oh, hey, oh. Remove the rotting. Go ahead, get ready. Anyone can do it. Sing, oh, hey, The food safety awareness, yeah, yeah. Food safety awareness, yeah, yeah. Let's spread this together. I bet you feel better when consuming clean food. We 
when you finally let go and you slay those germs, oh, cause you've joined the movement, sing oh, hey, oh, cause you're confident, babe, you were easy to pursue. What happened? Okay, what happened? Sorry, doctor, there is an internet issue. Uh, I will reconnect it, doctor. Okay. Something wrong with your connection. Okay, let, let, let. Okay, it's fine. No need to no need to watch it again. Hello? Oh, stop sharing. Stop sharing. Let's just discuss your video. Okay, unfortunately, there is a technical difficulty from your side. But I really appreciate your MTV and it was actually entertaining and informative. Now, who made the video? And what was the inspiration? Did you actually write the lyrics on your own or copy it from somewhere? Okay, to be honest. Basically we copied it from, uh, we took audio from internet only, doctor, but- uh, Yes, the audio I know. What is the original song? Uh, it is a food safety awareness. No, 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 no. The original song, I mean. Uh, a title is of uh, Food Safety Awareness from YouTube, Doctor. Some school project. It is from a school project. Okay. What I'm saying is the original music, you lifted this, is not the original Food Safety. You lifted it from another song. Okay. Yeah, what I'm actually YouTube, asking you, yeah, what I'm asking you is if you are going to make adaptation Okay, you have to recognize and you have to know where did you actually lifted the original melody music and then you created into something more creative. Now, if you're just going to copy that, okay, I understand it's okay with me. If you are actually inspired by other, other work, it's fine with me. But it's not original, but you also have to acknowledge them. Okay? Even before you play the video, or even you're going to show this to a group of people, we presented the video, and this is actually inspired by original song in high school musical entitled blah, 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 and we make a twist. Or you can do that in the later okay. part. Okay, What I'm saying is you do not own that music. You do not own that video. You created your own with you as the role players that makes your own video. But you need to do proper credits. Who own, who composed the video, who produced the sound. Okay, this is what I'm asking you. So I don't mind if you copy this. Okay, as long as you properly document and acknowledge because there is a copyright infringement. If I am the author, if I am the composer of this video and I've seen this, I can find a suit, even if it's just for education purpose. So that's why you would, see, you would actually put no copyright infringement for education purpose only. 
Okay? You cannot take this for your own credit. You need to give credits to what is due. Now, that is setting aside. Now we're talking about food safety. Why did you actually think or made you interested about the topic food safety? What made you interested about food safety? Uh, at all, all the members, actually, please open the video. All the members, I'd like to see all of you now. So I can easily call on you. Yes, proceed. Uh, a topic actually it is uh, public health. So we think... Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I have I have to, to see a patient. Uh, I'll be out for five minutes. Sorry. Okay, doctor. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, why did you choose the topic? Uh, yes, group. The public health uh, is our topic, doctor. So 
uh, for basic need food from starting from food uh, it is very uh, basic to we have to understand the safety and everything so we chose okay. safety okay christian anisha who do you think will benefit the video who is your intended audience where do you want to show this video and educate people who would be your target audience when you are making the video who are is, who are those patients or people in your mind that you would like to share this anisha christian can you hear me Can you hear me? Christian Anisha, why are you not responding? Who is this Christian Anisha? Okay, anyone from the group? Jaya Kumar, Doc? Jaya Kumar. Who is your target audience? Doc, our primary target audience uh, are mainly school children because if we uh, teach them right from their young age we can uh, really impart that thought into their mind doc and also okay. the children who are there uh, who are unable to go to the schools in the villages we can uh, they were our primary audience uh, target okay doc. very good and you think the video can actually relatable is it relatable to your target audience can i actually relate to that can I actually appreciate the video? Yeah, Doc, because we are not uh, teaching them in a theoretical way. We are teaching them in a funny way so that they can relate it and they can uh, take it into their mind, Doc. Okay, very good. You see, you. when you are choosing a medium, like, like this, for example, this group decided to make a video out of something that is serious, food safety, but let's make it more fun. Let's make it entertaining because anyway, our target audience are students, teachers that they can actually show them in school. And this is precisely the reason why you need to think deeply that if you are creating approach in public education, like health education, it has to be something that people can relate to, okay? Can you also show this to people who are involved in the food processing or manufacturing or maybe hotel, restaurant? Do you think they can appreciate this? Yes, doctor. Uh, we included everything from industrial safety, uh, everything we included in the video, doctor. Like uh, for every uh, person okay, from Christian. Trying... I'd like to hear from Christian, Anisha. Christian, Anisha, I can see you here now. Yes, doctor. Yes. Sorry for the interruption. Like network is not stable here. So what? What can you think of ways on how? How would you actually present this to the food processors, to the managers of restaurants? How can you make the video or how can you make the, the public information campaign more relatable to them? So we have to uh, do related videos uh, like food safety in the industry. So we have to learn something what's really happening in the industry so that we can make points uh, according to that to educate them about the food safety. <coughs> Doctor.
update command. Ah, oh, sorry about that. I actually lost you. Who were talking a while ago? It's so difficult these days. I am actually currently in the clinic and seeing lots of patients. Okay, go on. How can you actually make this video more relatable to the food business or food manufacturers or even hotel or restaurants? Okay, as you were explaining, Albert Kennedy, I saw you were actually talking about this. Yes, Doc. Doc, we can make a thing series like we can present them with the facts about the uh, important surveys where people got infected with foodborne diseases so they can take it important to uh, provide the best care, Doc. Okay, very good. Okay, last question. Janaki Devi, Janaki Devi, are you aware? Are you aware that there are a lot of videos circulating in social media of street foods in India being prepared by their bare hands? And there, there are a lot of people mocking, mocking, and telling that they prepare yes, dirty foods. This is how they do it in India. How can you actually defend and react on that? Uh, it, I can't defend in this case uh, because uh, in India there are people uh, doing preparing their street foods with bare hands. Instead, they could uh, start wearing uh, gloves and prepare uh, things with an, uh, new materials so, like hygiene materials. So how can you prevent them? How can you actually educate and help these people? We have to go and uh, tell them by showing this uh, circulating this video or uh, by randomly going to few people, doing posters, uh, so that they could uh, educate themselves by seeing this. Is it something cultural in India that this is how do you prepare? And this is have been have been doing this long time ago. So that's why people are not actually doing putting gloves because this is your tradition. Is this something traditional? Yeah, basically Indians eat with bare hands instead of using spoons which is our culture. But when it comes in a house, uh, we uh, prepare it in a hygiene way. We wash our hands regularly. Uh, we know, we make sure that we are clean. But when it comes to street food, we do, we have to serve people. So uh, as it is street food, uh, directly it has been uh, contaminated by the pollutions in the road. So that's the difference uh, when it yeah, comes exactly. to home and but the street food. Why do you think people still are alert? Why do you think a lot of people still eat street foods in India. Because they think uh, it is cheaper uh, when it is cost, in cost. And also it is delicious sometimes. Yeah, so, I can see that. A lot of people are smiling because they are, you are guilty eating these street foods. Even in the Philippines, you are eating street foods. Okay. But the thing here is you need to be careful of the consequences. Okay, and you need to be you need to be the one actually promoting hygiene to these people, food hygiene and safety, not just safety but hygiene. Okay, I'd like to commend this group. They put a lot of effort in making this uh, presentation. You will definitely get a good high grades. Thank you very much.
Good height, good safety. You did a good job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You see, you see, reporting can be fun. Group activity can be fun. I don't want you to always think reporting as if we are in a classroom, reading your script and doing nothing. How can you actually learn from that? You need to think out of the box. And this is public health. Anything that concerns public can sometimes, it is limitless, okay? As long as you know your target, as long as you know what you're doing and as long as you know what you are telling them, you can create a lot of ideas. It's not just a matter of, okay, report, that's it. Okay, next. Next group, please. Come on, hurry up, guys, while I still have no patient. Good day, Doc. This is Group 15 presenting on the uh, public health awareness on the danger of passive smoking. Can we actually ask all the... Oh, the introduction. Secondhand smoking is also called as an environmental tobacco okay, smoke. Video. Hold on, hold on. Pause for a while so I could see all of you who are present here and who are supposed to be reporting. All the members in the group, please open the video. Okay, let's start again. Good day, Doc. This is Group 15 presenting on the uh, public health awareness on the danger of passive smoking. Uh, the introduction. Secondhand smoking is also called as an environmental tobacco smoke. It's a mixture of two forms of smoke. That is the mainstream smoke and the sidestream smoke that come from the burning of uh, tobacco. The mainstream smoke is a smoke that are exhaled by a smoker, while the sidestream smoke is a smoke that arises from the lightened up the lightened end of the cigarette or pipe or cigar or tobacco burning in a hookah. Compared to the mainstream smoke, sidestream smoke is highly concentrated of carcinogen, that is of cancer causing agent, and is more toxic. The particles are smaller in size, making them easy to enter into the lungs and the body cell. So what are the problems of the the problems of the passive smoking the definition involuntary smoking or passive smoking is when a non-smoker are exposed to secondhand smoking taking in the same amount of nicotine and the toxic chemical as the smoker the more secondhand smoking you breathe the higher the level of this harmful chemical enter the body the its problem we can see that there is a problem at home or in public places or at work at home uh, any family member could develop health problem, children being, uh, especially children being sensitive to the toxin chemical uh, that are present in the smoke. In public, when, sm when, smoke, when smoking is allowed in public places like malls, etc., everyone is at risk of exposure to secondhand smoking. This is of special concern, especially when it comes to children. At work, cleaning the air and ventilating the building still fall short in, in preventing the exposure to secondhand smoking if people continue to smoke in the public places. That is why we always see that there is uh, a no smoking sign in the public places. Thank you. Okay, so now let's talk about the secondhand smoke exposure here in the Philippines and in India. So here in the Philippines, 21.5% of adults ranging in ages 18 above who work in indoors are exposed to secondhand smoke at their workplace. Another 21.9% of adults are exposed to secondhand smoke in restaurants, and another 37.6% of them are exposed to secondhand smoke in public transportations. While in the youth, ages ranging between 13 to 15, 54.2% of them here in the Philippines are exposed to secondhand smoke in enclosed public spaces, and 38.3% of said youth are exposed to secondhand smoking at home. You okay, know, moving on to India. 30.2% 30, of adults are exposed to secondhand smoke in, in the workplace back in India, while 7.4% 7, 7 of them are exposed to secondhand smoke in restaurants, and another 13.3% of adults are exposed to secondhand smoking in public transportations. While in the youth, again ranging in ages between 13 to 15, 21% of them are exposed to secondhand smoking in enclosed public places, and 11% are exposed at home. 
Now let's go to the essential aims on how to reduce the dangers of passive smoking. So the first important thing is the importance of educating people on passive smoking and, it, and its dangers. So 41% 41 of males and 39% of females in India are exposed to secondhand smoking at home, which is a very big percentage and it takes place at home. While 32% of Indian males and 19% of females are exposed to secondhand smoke at work. And we all know that tobacco kills approximately 1.3 million people in Southeast Asia every year. This includes those who have never smoked. So okay. involuntary smoking is a cause of disease, including lung well cancer in healthy non-smokers. Okay. Okay. Open the video without PowerPoint because you're just reading your report. Okay. Basically, there is actually a problem with secondhand smoking. What can you say now with the advent of your e-cigarettes? Is, is it also considered a secondhand or passive smoking? And do you think e-cigarettes is more or less dangerous than the actual smoking or cigarette smoking? I guess the fly considered a secondhand smoke because uh, currently there's not enough studies upon e-cigarettes, so they think that it is safer. But we do we actually don't know about the long term effect because this actually happened to cigarette smoking also back in the days where actual doctors would prescribe their patients to smoke. So at that time they don't know about the long term effect, but now they do know about the long term effect of smoking and secondhand smoking. So I think the, okay. the same thing applies for second hand, or for e-cigarettes. Correct. And there is actually there are a lot, actually a lot of um, studies that are being conducted these days because e-cigarettes have been already passed or have been there for more than seven, six years now. And now they are seeing the effects. And we could actually also, there are a lot of um, measures from the government on how they're going to control them. Are they going to be banned or not? So basically, there are movement from the pulmonologist side that e-cigarettes can also impose harm also in this passive smoking. The way you present it is actually, it could even be more presentable or even more interesting if, if your, your PowerPoint focuses on, not on the numbers or the words, but on the statistics and figures and the graphs and graphical illustration. Why do you think you need to, to use graphical illustration? The person, the person who are actually doing the report is just stating us 21% in blah, 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 blah. How can you actually make it more convincing? If you want to compare or you want to state the incidence rate, are you just going to explain that word by word or just present it in a graph? in a table, comparing 10 years, 20 years from now, comparing this and that, a person with this and that. By showing your PowerPoint, I can easily understand what you're talking, not reading them one by one. The importance of second timing is this. There is a problem. Come on, guys, this is not public health. If you're just reading it, public health means visualizing, especially we are in virtual. Do you think what you have said would actually impart in my mind? No, I even forgot those numbers. I even forgot what you're talking about. But if I saw them right in front, picture of lung cancer, see, people dying in the hospital. That is why you could see that now boxes of cigarettes, you could see now graphical illustration. Smoking kills. Have you noticed that? That they already imprint those graphs, those pictures? Because they want to make a huge impact. They want to create an effect to remind the people. And if you're going to show me this, public health education, I would not learn from this anyway. It's a bad presentation. 
your topic is very relevant. Your topic is very timely. But you did not think over how to present this properly to convey the message. Who is your target audience for your presentation? Is it me, your professor? It is not for me. Always remember that if you are in a public health, in a preventive medicine, your reporting should always be directed to the public, not to your professor. I know that already. Why are you telling me? Your classmates know this already. You see the difference? If all of you actually think, okay, let's make this topic more interesting. And the target audience would be, okay, now, if you're going to tell me your target audience would be your classmates or maybe your your parents, how could they make it even more relatable? Because from the start, you don't know who is your target audience. Your target audience is just your professor. And you think I was impressed? No, this is not for me anyway. So cigarette smoking can also be discussed this because this is passive smoking, correct? And you didn't discuss passive smoking. You didn't discuss e-cigarette here. And that is more relevant. And what is the government doing right now? And future doctors, what should we tell our patients? That's how you do public health information. Okay, next group. I'm sorry, but this group will get a very low score. The same with the second group. Okay, next group. Next group. Come on, guys, hurry up. <laughs> While I don't have patience here, come on. Let's start. Group 16, we are presenting our topic, Awareness of Nutrition in Children. The first question comes in our mind, why? This is Group 16, we are presenting our topic, Awareness of Nutrition in Children. The first question comes in our mind, why? A balanced nutrition is important in children. The parent. Oh, this is group 16. We are presenting our topic awareness of nutrition in children. The first question comes in our mind why a balanced nutrition is important in children the parents think that and wants that their children grow up healthy and live their best of life so in today's video we are explaining the ways of giving nutrition and habit habit related to nutrition and disorders which can affect children's body when child doesn't get the nutrition properly Proper nutrition is necessary for health attainment and maintenance, optimal growth and development of individuals, particularly among the vulnerable groups, children and women. Nutrition for pregnant and lactating women should always be emphasized to ensure good nutrition during these periods. Importance of nutrition for children. A child grows and develops more rapidly during the first year of life than at any other time. On the average, a baby should double his weight by the fifth to sixth month and triple it by the end of his first year. This rapid growth of bones, muscles and tissues can take place only if the baby is getting enough of the right kind of food. Nutrition is important because it helps in the development of brain. It speeds up the growth and development of body, including the formation of teeth and bones. It helps fight 
fights and infections and disease it speeds up the recovery of a sick child and it provides the child more energy the diet because eating well helps your child have more energy stronger muscles and bones a healthy body weight lower risk of disease and better overall health so what does a healthy diet for your child look like a healthy diet is one that includes a wide variety of nutritious foods when preparing meals for your child follow Canada's eat well plate fill approximately half the plate with vegetables and fruits fill about one quarter with whole grain products and about one quarter with protein rich foods add a glass of milk or water to complete the basic food groups these are the nutrients protein vitamin iodines and carbohydrates and fats and in front of them these are the food resources respectively complementary foods for infants complementary feedings means giving other foods in addition to breast milk additional foods and liquids are called complementary foods as they are additional or complementary to breast feeding rather than educate on their own as the diet it must be nutritious food and in adequate amounts so the child can grow complementary foods are given by age 6 months in addition to breast milk and for the increased nutritional demand of a growing child breast feeding however should continue for as long as 2 years starting other foods in addition to breast milk at 6 completed months helps a child to grow well common nutritional deficiencies affected children babies and children should eat a variety of foods every day to get all the nutrients they need this will prevent the occurrence of nutritional deficiencies particular among infants children we are explaining some nutritional disorders and how to correct them first for protein energy malnutrition breastfeed your infant bring child to health center for immunization vitamin a capsule supplementation give complementary foods to infants increase the variety of foods served and green leaf leafy and yellow vegetables gradually practice family planning now the second one is the vitamin a deficiency continue exclusive breast feeding feed child at least half cup of green leafy and yellow vegetables cooked with a little fat or oil every day grow green leafy and yellow vegetables and fruits in the backyard bring child to health center for immunization and vitamin a capsule we are explaining iron deficiency anemia eat iron rich food such as green leafy vegetables bring child to health care center for further clinical evaluation and iron supplementation observe personal hygiene and maintain a sanitary environment to prevent parasitic infection follow these tips with your child to build a positive attitude toward food here is a list of do's prepare meals with your child they are more likely to eat food if they're involved in making it experiment with new foods And remember, it can take several tries before your child enjoys eating something new. Lead by example. Your child is more likely to try new foods if you eat them too. Turn off the TV and put away toys during meal time. Children eat better without these distractions. Here is a list of don'ts. Don't force feed your child. Let them decide how much they want to eat. Avoid skipping meals. Make it a routine and offer your kids healthy meals and snacks at scheduled times throughout the day. Avoid using food as a reward or punishment, as this can develop a negative attitude toward food. Have meals together as a family. Eating well adds enjoyment to life, and cooking with family and friends makes preparing meals more fun.
It's also a great way to pass along cooking skills and learn about traditional or cultural foods. Okay, very good. Group, um, this group, can you please open the video? Present up. Yes. Now, the way you present it is actually a mix of creating or lifting some videos from the, which is which is actually acceptable it's fine but the way you actually deliver the lecture the way you actually able to convey your message is not that really appropriate or not that really effective no a simple you know a simple technique on how to probably show them because who is your target audience for this presentation? You said that this can also be for the mothers. This it only be for the parents, the families, correct? Correct, am I correct? Pooja? Yadav? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, you are explaining to me, explaining to us what is the presentation or the topic and then you're telling us that why is it important because basically you are addressing this to the mothers. Now, do you think it is also important for them to know not just the nutritional status of patients of patient oh, of the patient, but do you also think it's important to teach them how to mix oral rehydration solution? Nutrition, you're talking about nutrition. But have yes, you sir. actually considered repairing oral rehydration solution? of what to do if I, if my kid starts to vomit, if my kid starts to have diarrhea, what would be the home remedy? These are practical tips that can be more effective and relevant. Uh, yes, not, sir, oral. You, yeah, oral dehydration salt or oral dehydration solution. What would you do if your kid is actually vomiting or having diarrhea? ORS, giving ORS and uh, other OR rehydration. Yeah, what, yes, what if I don't have ORS? I cannot go to the pharmacy. I live Mixing in a of salt and uh, sugar in water in the ratio of two is to one and then mix and give to... See, if you are able to incorporate it in, in your presentation, and that will be more practical. Because you're talking about nutrition, correct? You see, the video itself you lifted from YouTube is really quite effective. But what, is, what was your contribution as the reporter? Sir? You already show us what is actually known already. Okay, other groups, what do you think? How can you improve your presentation? Shreyash, Shukla. Shukla. Shukla, you are talking. Can you hear us, Shukla? Uh, sir, maybe he has a natural problem. May I explain? No. Let's call in other group members. Okay. Girish, Sharma. Sharma Girish. Yes, Doc. I'm... How can you improve your presentation? Tell me, how, if I'm going to give you grades and I'm going to improve your grade, tell me, how can I give you yes, good grade <clears throat> with this presentation? Sharma. Yes, sir. So what? 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 Why can you not answer? I'm just asking you, how are you going to improve your presentation or discussion on nutrition? You don't know? Or you don't care?
Girish Sharma, are you with us? Yeah. Hello, Doc. What? What is your topic uh, anyway? We will provide. Uh, we will uh, like uh, provide help from for meal from government. We will ask for meal. What do you mean, ask for meal? What are you talking about? Like, M mid meal. What? Mid meal. Shukla Shrayas, you are talking there. Are you really with us or doing something else? Uh, doctor, actually, Shukla. I'm at airport. I'm going back home. There's an emergency in my That's place. the problem with you guys. <laughs> You are in but the I'm listening the whole presentation. Else. I can explain the person who are Just leave this session this. if you are actually not here. Leave the session. I will mark you absent. No, doctor. I can explain the question you are asking. It's, it's okay. You see, I'm taking time to teach here. I'm taking time. I'm even actually right here. Even I see patients, I take time to teach you, but you guys are not paying attention. I don't care where you are. No. You know that you are in a class, right? Yes, doctor. See? You are in a class and you are doing something else. Okay, how can you improve now your presentation? Uh, doctor, we can arrange workshops in schools and communities so that we can educate the parents and we can go for data survey and government can help in this thing by providing with the meals in to the government schools and that will increase the number of students coming to the school and they will get more and more educated regarding this thing. Okay, very good. Do you know about fortification? What is a fortification? There is... It is a process of what? Have you heard of the term fortification? Yes, doctor. I have listened about that. Okay. What is fortification? Doctor, it's a kind of reinforcement we build to strengthen the place against any kind of problem or if we can talk in direct meaning any kind of attack, we can avoid that. So it's basically okay. a kind of reinforcement. We are talking about food. Can you fortify the food? Can we actually enhance the nutritional value of a certain food? And why do you think it's effective? Because in the Philippines, we actually fortify are the food that we prepare in the school. Okay, this, this, this noodles is fortified with iodine, salt, and a bit of magnesium. We include nutrients, that, that is fortification, correct? Yes, Do you also have that in India? Yes, doctor, we also have that in India. We have uh, mutant crops with different, different kinds of nutritions and uh, we are doing gene, uh, like gene mutations in different crops and different fruits so they can have both vitamins or all the nutritions the different foods have a one single food. Okay, thank you. Same goes Kumar, for the crop. Kumar Soni. Kumar Soni. Yes, no. What is the current status of malnutrition in India? Do you have increased rate of children who are malnourished? And if so, where can you actually find the highest rate or incidence of malnutrition in India? Sir, basically from previous years, the malnutrition in India is definitely declining. But the most, most malnutrition in India in the state of Bihar, which is around 42.9%. And under five years, it has been reduced from in India overall, 38.4 to 21%. So, sir, basically, as the country developing, it will decline, declining year by year. What are the factors 
why do actually children become malnourished? So basically, the uh, the um, most important factor is the sir hunger. They are not um, getting basic food which are rich in nutrition and vitamins. And what and based of what you said, do you have sh food shortage in this province or in this area? Sir, not the food shortage, but basically the po po poverty. The uh, parents cannot afford good quality of food for their children. So it's poverty. Yes, sir. The main factor. Okay. So are, do we still seeing a big gap between malnourished children in rural or in the city? Or it's actually no significant difference? Yes, sir. We definitely see a difference between married children in in urban area and the city. The city city children are more nourished than the uh, urban area. Why do you Why do you say so, sir? Because in the okay. in city, the the bill, the bill. Why is there difference between malnourishment in city and in the rural areas? Tabish Suhail. Uh, sir, because the per capita income is uh... yes, yes, the beach. Why? Why is there significant difference? Kumal Sony. Yes, too. Why is this difference between the city and the rural <laughs> area? So in basically, city are the parents are more aware about the basic nutrition about their child, but in the urban area, the parents are less educated. And I again say the difference between their their Okay. In income, isn't income, it, yeah, but the, isn't it in the in the provinces they have supply of vegetables and fruits? Yes, sir. But in yes, the sir. provinces, in they have farming and fishing, but still, why mm. they still have malnourishment, despite of the resources, despite of availability. What do you think so, is the problem, Pankaj? Pankaj, Pauj Dar. Why do you think there's a problem, even if these are farmers and fishermen? Why do you think people are still malnourished? I cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, Pankaj. No audio, Pankaj. Pankaj, we cannot hear you. Monu, Yadav. Monu, Yadav. Yes, no. Okay, okay. Can, you please con can you please explain to me? Speak loudly, please. Speak loud. They, they don't have enough uh, enough income that they can afford the good quality of nutritional food so that they can have good meals. Okay. So despite of the availability of resources like farm or agriculture or fishery, some people are still not getting the proper nutrients because of what? Because of the diet is imbalance. Yeah, because 
no? Maybe they, they are just relying on their crops, but the crops would also need to have another source of nutrients. Okay. All right. So good. Thank you very much for the group. Next group, please. How many have presented? Good afternoon, Dr. Ray. Hi, Doc. Apat na po. Four groups, I think. Okay. Fifth group, please. Hello. Yes, the uh, just the person. Next group, please. Yes, as we're trying to share the screen now. We're having something. Audio, audio, please. Okay, what's going on? A pleasant morning to everyone. We are members of group 18. Our topic for today is parenting. So what does the word parenting mean? As a parent, you give your children a good start in life. You nurture, guide, and protect them. Parenting is a process that prepares your child for independence. As a child grows and develops, there are many things you can do to help your child.
What is parenting? Parenting or child rearing promotes and supports the physical development. It relates to growth and skill development in the body. The next is emotional development. It is the child's self-confidence, empathy, and ability to react and express their emotions. The next is social development. It is how the child mingles, plays, talks with the peers and with other people in the society. The next is spiritual development. It is about realizing or becoming more and more aware of one's natural or innate spirituality. The next is intellectual development. It is how the child organizes their mind, ideas, thoughts to make sense of the world they live in. It is all from infancy to the adulthood of the child. Parenting refers to the intertussies, that is the quality of raising a child and not exclusively for a biological relationship. Parenting practices are on the world share three major goals, that is ensuring children's health and safety, that is the quality of the food we provide to our children. The next is preparing children for life as productive adults, that is making our children live independently and transmitting cultural values. The high quality parental relationship is critical for healthy development. The stages of parenting is our image making, which is pregnancy. The next is nurturing, which is birth to 18 to 24 months. The next is authoritative, which is from 2 to 5 years. The next is interpretive, which is from 5 years to the adolescence. The next is interdependent, which is during adolescence. The next is departure, which is late. Adolescents to Parents prepare for the arrival of the baby and at the same time begin to form images about how their lives will change and how they will cope with their responsibilities and challenges of the baby.
Okay, open the video, please. Okay, what's what's the problem with your presentation? What can you say about the presentation? Okay. The PowerPoint is fine. You avoid too much wordings. Okay, the graphics are sometimes also appropriate, but what's the problem with your presentation? Doctor, the uh, audio was audible, doctor. Yes, most of your reporters, they didn't check the audio. So you see, when you are doing a presentation like this, and especially if you are recording, it's useless if you're not going to test it. Who did the editing? Myself, doctor. See, why did you accept those recordings if the audio was not clear enough? And why did you not tell your classmates to repeat the video recording? Hmm. See? So this is not just a matter of, okay, just submit it. So basically, you are not really putting effort in making sure that you are going to come up with a good presentation. Unfortunately, the audio actually spoil everything. But the PowerPoint the topic is really quite interesting. Now, what do you think would be the challenges of the parents these days? You talk about parenting. You talk about the stages, what the family should overcome. So. Based on the readings, what do you think the family or the parents in rearing children these days, what do you think would be the challenges? Uh, doctor, most of the parents. Uh, nowadays, most of the parents are uh, working persons. And uh, what I think is they are spending very less time with their children. So I think so. They don't have uh, plenty of time to know about them. They just come uh, home and uh, see the see to the kid and they uh, go back with their usual works. So I think that is the major thing that uh, they have to take care of nowadays. So having said that they don't have enough time, are we also talking about the children these days lack discipline? Yes. Vendahana. Vendahana, what can you say about the children these days? Uh, actually, the children. No, 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 no. Also... Give other your give others the chance to answer. Vandana. Yes, stop. So, what now would be the implication if the parents are actually having not enough time to be with their children? What would be the effect? Uh, because of that, the children are uh, affected more. Uh, they do not get enough uh, 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 enough time to spend with their parents and they are uh, very worried about it. And uh, uh, they don't know to uh, 
react with others uh, they don't know how to um, how to uh, Uh, how to interact with other people because of their parents are not talking to them and they go other with the phones they use more phones and they are uh, not spending time with the persons they are only using phones and uh, going in wrong way like that so having said that murugan murugan what can you advise your families your parents how can they actually develop or spend more time with children and doctor what can you advise them mm doctor one second question there's a feedback are you leaving with someone there with someone there no doctor okay what advice what advice mm -hmm. Oh, doctor, we have want to spend uh, uh, time with uh, children. Ganesh, Ganesh, yes, doctor. Okay, what advice can you give to the parents, to the families? Ah, uh, to spend more time with their children and nurture them. How? Ah, uh, to uh, how? teaching them the values and morals of life and all like uh, they have to spend more time and discuss about what went on in their day and then tell how? them what they how by how? interacting and spending time with the children the parents should spend more time every day like uh, uh spending time like doing something together or something like mm -hmm. that so they talk about how their day went and discuss about what they can do better and uh, mm -hmm. like that so basically it's on the communication yes. process yes spending time okay. yeah even if it's like a small time it's it's necessary it's important also okay would you agree that there is actually no exact formula on how to become a good parent mm -hmm. hema would you agree that there is actually a no exact formula of becoming or raising a child Do we have an exact formula to raise a child? Uh, no, doctor. We cannot say because every um, everyone has a different opinion on raising their children. Some give more freedom, and uh, some restrict uh, their children. So it depends on the parents. There is no exact formula how to raise a child. So it is depends on their individual. So some tend to be more strict to make their children disciplined, while some um, give the freedom and uh, how to and uh, also explain them and uh, teach them how to use their freedom. So it depends on the parents. There is no exact formula of how to uh, parenting. So the type of parenting, do you think it can actually be transcend from generation to generation? The way your parents raised you would be the okay. same style that you're gonna raise your children. Is it true these days or not? It is actually changing the, from generation to generation. Uh, my parents won't be raised by the way uh, that they raise me. So uh, my children will also will have. I will also raise them in a different way than my parents. So it is changing Why? from generation to generation. Why? Why there is a change? Of, the world is changing everything around us is changing so our parents must actually uh, help them to live in an environment of uh, that so if the environment is is changing uh, we must start in the way can you please mute yourself whoever is interrupting Okay, as the time is changing, as also the world is changing, the family should also adapt. Now, what do you think are the things that the children need to develop for them to adapt to the challenges of the world of life? What are the skills they should learn from the families? What are the values that they should learn from the families? they should uh, first okay hold on uh, they should be hold on let's hear it from sara saravana kumar 
Uh, yes, doctor. So what are the skills, the values that the children must learn? They are. They are every, everything from the parents. Could you be more specific, please? Yes, doctor. Can you be more specific? Not everything from the parents learning. What, what kind of answer is that? Hmm. How to interact with others. Like that, that we are observing from the parents. We are talking with the neighborhood also that we are observing. That only we are doing. Oh, okay. What else, Preeti? Uh, they should know the what family situations, Doc. Because nowadays, most of the children remain uh, with a... Uh, they used to be so liberal. They don't uh, know about the values of money. Uh, for me, actually, uh, until this COVID, I was not aware of my family situations most of the times. But this COVID time got me to know about the family situations, how it actually uh, the family runs and it was uh, and i was able to know uh, how usually they run the family and i could for now i i'm able to know about the values of money so i know when i spend some money i will be able to know that uh, uh, we must be more cautious in spending some amount of the, so our parents could be also manage the amount when they use it for us so that is the main okay. thing okay having said that in a family, it's very important to know the dynamics of the family. When I say dynamics, accepting the reality, the current situation, accepting also what? The roles and responsibilities of each family members. Okay, how do you able how can you how can you teach this teach this to the young children about the family dynamics, about the role that they have to fulfill for their yeah. family, for their own families? Ganesan? Ganesan, every yes, family doctor. members, do you agree that every family member has a duty to, to, has a role to play? Yes, doctor. Everyone okay, has a role I, to play. And okay, uh, the children, they can learn by observing them? the parents. By observing the parents? What else? Yes. How can you educate young children? To understand by making the them also participate by making them do small work also. Like that, yeah. including them. Uh, yes, doctor, like that. Yeah, small chores and also yes. mm. teaching them the proper time management. Okay, mm -hmm. you are given two to three hours to study for your homework. And then I will also give you 30 minutes to one hour of viewing time. You are not mm -hmm. allowed to use your gadget unless you finish your homework, things like that. Yes, like giving rewards after doing the work, like that. Okay. Teach them, them also how to clean their own rooms. Mm -hmm. Ask them, them also to throw the garbage. Small chores can actually do, uh, do a lot and really making them realize that they are actually part of the family by taking responsibilities, correct? Yes, doctor. Okay, very good, this group. Okay, next group, please. Thank you. I could see that the group has actually imparted a lot of things in the presentation. They, they had a teamwork, but unfortunately, the editing and also the audio failed to make the presentation perfect. Okay, next group. Anyway, they did a good job. Next group, please. Next group. Do we still have Dr. Andres? Is she still around? No? Okay. Understanding substance use and abuse. Misuse of substances like alcohol and drug is a growing problem. Teens and young adults are most at risk. Half of all new drug users are under the age of 18. One in five high school students have abused prescription drugs. One third of high school students are currently use alcohol. 
23% use marijuana 22% use tobacco Mr. Sam, you have to be more safety conscious and strictly adhere to all kind of healthy guidelines to prevent these kind of accidents and to take better care of yourself so you will not end up in hospital like this. I'm so sorry doctor. I frequently take some pills and some shots of whiskey before to focus on my work and this morning I took some shots of whiskey before going to work and all I uh, remember is a loud bang while driving to work and I, then I woke up here all bruised and hurt at the hospital. You were involved in a motorbike accident and under the influence of drug and alcohol, you ran into a parked fuel tank. You are so lucky to be alive. Oh my God. Dr. Kanavasa Nilakya, abuse is the use of a substance in amounts or by methods which are harmful to individuals or others. Addiction is the physical or psychological need to continue using a substance despite its harmful or dangerous effects. The following signs of worth noticing and responding to the appropriate treatment. Sudden mood swings, changes in sleeping pattern, loss of interest in normal activities and hobbies, bloodshot or glassy eyes, constant sniffles or running nose. Withdrawal from friends and family, changes in normal behavior, lack of hygiene and grooming. It is important to keep in mind that these signs are not appearing every day. Alcohol Awareness Month is a national public health awareness campaign sponsored by the National Council for Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, <laughs> NCADD. It takes place every April. Alcohol Awareness Month was developed in order to increase awareness and, and understanding of the causes and treatment of one of our nation's top public health problems, alcoholism, established in 1987. Alcohol Awareness Month allows community to focus on spreading awareness and reducing the stigma associated with alcohol addiction. Observance of this awareness campaign also highlights the need for education on the dangers of unsafe alcohol consumption. How you can help spread the awareness of alcoholism? Alcoholism is a drug of choice among many young adults, killing more people other than illegal drugs. There are awareness campaigns in which you can first participate by taking, talking to members of your community about the dangers of excessive alcohol usage. It's important to educate children about the dangers of excessive drinking and the impact it can have, have on their future. If you are worried that someone, someone you know is alcoholic, try talking to them about your concerns. Thank you. Well, the glass hit the chicken right in front of the face. Jack Daniels was a falling like a rain on the stage. And a fight broke out and a bouncer broke a ball. Over all that noise, I heard somebody holler. Alcohol abuse. Shameful waste the precious food. Okay, can you please open the video, please, all of those members of the group? Okay, we all know the effects of alcoholism, not just on the personal level, but also in the family and community. Now, can you please tell me the incidence of alcoholism in India and in the Philippines? Can someone please tell me? How big is the issue of alcoholism in the country? And why we need to talk about this? Why do I have to talk about alcoholism? What's the implication of alcoholism? Mm, you did a good Presentation with the audio again. Uh, okay. Actually, the next time, the next time that you're going to make a video recording and you are not sure of the quality of the video, the best thing you can do is actually put subtitle. At least we can see and understand what you're talking about with the English subtitle. Okay, the next time you're going to do editing on the video and you are not sure and you cannot have and you don't have time. To revise everything, at least you put subtitle. Okay. As you were saying, Vinod, Tandayut Patani? Uh, actually, uh, annually, 
um, men and women are more uh, more addicted to alcohol uh, dying uh, annually uh, uh, which making alcohol is a third leading preventable cause diseases in all over the world um so why uh, you in, did not did you mention that in the presentation uh, no doctor uh, we oh, were no. about to See? create awareness awareness about alcohol yes. abuse you are raising awareness but you are not making realizing your audience how great the problem is and how are you going to raise awareness if we are not fully aware at first how the great how the problem is the gravity of the problem you see that's why epidemiology statistics facts figures is very important in fact this is also has to be included in the introduction in that way you can get me attention for example do you know that two out of 10 indians are actually alcoholics and these two patients actually had this implication lost their job even chronic illnesses and even they they actually caused deaths or accidents you see now you are getting my attention they making them realize the gravity of the situation and you you feel to include that in the presentation why you go straight to the information campaign without realizing the gravity of the problem who is your target audience where do you intend uh, young to... adult and... yeah where do you in... who is your intended audience uh, the students and the young adults see the students and the young adults Do you think they will care about this? Hmm. Do you do you know that reckless driving can also be related to alcohol drinking and causing accidents as well among young adults? Minor fights, no? In the clubs, in the bars, are actually almost common if you are drunk. So why don't you show us some pictures or videos of drunken men or young adults having parties everywhere and the implication and the effects of this irresponsible drinking that can actually get my attention correct you see Salim Sampras Yes, doctors. Okay, what are the problems of alcoholism again? Um, it will lead to addiction and some serious health problems and antisocial behavior, doctor. So, if you're going, if you're going to discuss problems of alcoholism and how are going to prevent them, you also need to discuss them in a manner on the individual, on the family, and in the community level. You see. There are a lot of factors concerning this, but if you're going to tell me on the individual, personal level, and this would be the implications of alcoholism on the family, this would be the implication, and in the community, this would be the implication. In that way, it has a system where we can follow through. No, don't just jump into one. You could have discussed a lot of things in alcoholism. Okay, what else? What are Can you please open the videos? Group members. How can I call on you if I cannot see you in the video? I can only see two members of the group. Sel Selvaraj. Selvaraj. Okay, I've seen in the video that you are actually doing counseling and also group therapy. Is this correct? Okay. So how how actually how effective this approaches and therapy for alcoholism? Do you have programs in Philippines or in 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 India where in people can actually go to? 
seek help for alcoholics like this? Or is it actually just theoretical? Do we have programs? Do we have organizations? Do we have advocacies that promote prevention of alcoholism? Do they have anonymous alcoholics, just like in the, in the United States? Have you looked into these programs? Do we have hotline we can call? What? We have that. You have that in India or in the Philippines? And why did you not include it in your presentation? If you have that, you are promoting awareness, correct? Yes, sir. But you feel to present us what are the available resources? Yes, Doctor, there was a, a National Council of Alcoholism and, and Drug uh, Drug Awareness Program, which is what, where it happens every every year in April uh, to create awareness about alcoholism and his uh, a highway of uh, increasing uh, in, in adults and all over the world. Did you emphasize that in the presentation? Yeah, Doctor, it, it was added in. It was mentioned about, alcohol, about the alcohol month, which ha which happens every year in the April. It was in the video. It was in the video. Yeah, doctor. And you are making sure that the public should be aware of this, correct? Yeah, doctor. And you want to know the public. Uh, you want you, the public, to know about this campaign. Yeah. Okay. So the presentation could be even improved if you were able to have a concrete approach. At first, I thought it was continuous with the usage of the graphics and all, but during at the middle and the later part of the presentation, you lost the interest of your audience. And you lost also the message, okay? So next time, make sure if you're going to do presentation like this, public information campaign, try to always be in the shoes of your audience. How would your friend or even your brother would feel if I'm going to see this for the first time? Will I be interested? Have you asked your mother or father to watch the video? Will it be effective for them? You can do Pilot study among your family members, among your friends, not, not even your classmates. Since we are talking about public health, ask someone to, to watch your video and then get the reaction. Because this video, this campaign, this activity is intended for them. You see? Have you tried that? No. Because you are so busy preparing the video for your professors. And that defeats the purpose. Okay, remember public health is for laymen, for people who is not actually in our field, for common people. So you're missing the point of this activity if you are able, if you are not able to connect and engage them in your campaign. See? Okay. So anyway, I think we still have a uh, next meeting for the other groups. This group also uh, did a good job at first, but they lost the, the interest in the presentation. So still, they're going to get good grades. They, they did extra effort in making this presentation and acknowledge that. But next time, try to be more cohesive with your message. Okay? Okay, doctor. Okay, so Salim, are you the... Who's the LO? I'm, I'm still waiting for your... Uh, Simran Gupte. Please send me the group numbers and their topics so I can put their scores. And then send it to Dr. Andres. Okay, 
So I think that would end our session for today. And then next week, we're going to have another session. You still have time to improve your presentation if you want to get good grades based on the discussion. And make sure if I'm going to call all of you, you can able to defend your presentation. Do not rely on the presenters itself. You should also know the topic very well. So in that way, I can check if you are actually did it as a team, not just your leader doing the task. Okay? So thank you for your attention, everyone. And next time, I need more interaction from the class. Okay? Okay, doctor. All right. Okay, you can leave now. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, doctor. Thank you.